So the last tachycardias that we're going to talk about are the wide complex irregular tachycardias, and there's just two of them. There's V-fib and there's torsades de point. So first, let's look at a couple examples. Here, we have an example of V-fib, and we see this kind of irregular wide complex tachycardia. There's no kind of distinct um, QRS complex kind of morphologies. It's much different than the polymorphic VT that you could see. Here's another example of V-fib. And then here, we actually see a normal sinus rhythm degenerate into um, this torsades de point. So you see this kind of wide complex irregular tachycardia. So in V-fib, you have no identifiable, identifiable P, QRS, or T waves. Um, it's just kind of these kind of fibrillations. And the etiology of it are all the things that we learned in our ACLS training. So the H's and T's, hypovolemia, hypoxia, acidosis, um, high and low potassium, hypothermia. For the T's, pneumothorax, tampamod, um, toxins, and then PE and ACS. So whenever you have someone in V-fib, you want to be thinking about these reversible causes. And the thing is, yes, we have this algorithm under stable, but V-fib is very, very rarely stable. These patients will decompensate within seconds, if not minutes. So whenever you see V-fib, whether it's on a monitor or, some, or someone pages you that this patient is in V-fib, you want to call a code because this patient, if they haven't already, they will decompensate, they will become unresponsive, and you'll have to start ACLS. So... When you're running ACLS, those are the H's and T's you want to run through, but you want to be ready because these patients cannot sustain V-fib. They cannot sustain consciousness with V-fib for long. If it's torsades, the treatment for that is magnesium, um, but otherwise, if it's V-fib, like we said, call code and be thinking about the H's and T's when you're treating, for, treating these patients. So that concludes kind of our tachycardias. It's a lot, but if you kind of just approach it by going down the al algorithm, looking at um, whether this is wide or narrow, then figuring out whether it's regular or irregular, and kind of thinking about the types of, uh, types of tachycardias that are within that group, you could kind of help uh, figure out what's going on with this patient a little more easily. So I hope that was helpful, and thank you for listening.